Hello everyone, uh, this is a video I've been hoping to make for a while and I'm finally getting it done today. This is going to be particularly helpful for those who are relatively new to NIME or who just haven't fully gotten the hang of it. I'm going to share with you the resources, the tools that I use to help me get up to speed with NIME. So the first one I'm going to, the first couple I'm, I'm going to start with reside in the NIME platform itself. The first one I want to show you is you notice here you have this examples connection. Now, if you double click on this, um, it loads for you the folders of different examples. It might say uh, select to connect or something like that because it reads this information from the server. So I just recently loaded this. That's why you see mine. In your case, it might just say that. Click on that and it's going to get those folders available for you. So what you have here is ready to go examples. You can see exactly how the notes are configured. You can see how they achieved whatever they achieved. So if, for instance, you want to know how to do something with visualizations, you can go there and look at the examples. You want to make a bar chart, double click on that. It downloads that workflow from the server. You can see down here it's downloading. Okay, it's saying that I'm missing an extension. So I'm going to install that and I'm going to restart my NIME. So down here it's installing the software. Okay, so NIME's reloaded. I'm just going to go back to get that. So see here it's asking me to, to uh, double click to see the examples. I'm going to do that. It's going to fetch all the content. So we looked at visualizations and we looked at the bar chart. Okay, so that's loaded. And you can see I don't have those errors anymore because those have been downloaded. So, you know, you're new to NIME. You're not exactly sure how you might make a bar chart. I'm just going to run this so we get some data. I can run this to see what it looks like. Uh, interactive view. So it looks like they have countries and they have a uh, total, total of what? Let me just look at this a bit. So oh, Olympic medals, wonderful. So I, if I want to build a bar chart, I could see how they've configured it. So the category is the countries you can see here and it's including the different medals. Here they've configured the title, orientation is vertical. You can also do a horizontal orientation. So this could be a starting point to help you build a bar chart and you might even use a different note to do that. But let's say you want to see a data science application, for instance, you can look at their applications folder. They have different use cases. Let's look at churn. They have something for churn analysis. You can again, download in that. And you can see how they've done that. So they've used the k-means. And these examples already come with data. So you can see, you know, not only do you get the nodes, you get the methodology, you get to even learn some data science because there might even be some different algorithms they've used that are not familiar with it. So this is a pretty good way to just explore, you know, both how to build in, in NIME, different nodes options and different data science methodology. So that's one example. That's one very helpful tip I have for you. Another helpful tip. Uh, you, let me just open this again because I want to show you something along these lines. Uh, another helpful tip, uh, because when you start in NIME, you don't necessarily know what the nodes are called. And now there is an option here in the node repository. It's called the fuzzy search and switching that on. So like clicking on this, you know, switches on the fuzzy search is very helpful. And the reason why is sometimes the nodes might have, you know, an hyphen, the, the nodes might have a hyphen or a space maybe a, a different case, you know, just something that makes them a bit hard to find. Or maybe you want to do a filtering, but you don't know what, exactly what the nodes are called. Having the fuzzy search makes it easier to find. Let's just take the um, one that actually was hard for me to find before is the NCHARS filter. Here I search for NCHAR and I don't see anything because this is, this is not exactly how it is called in the in the node repository but if i switch on fuzzy search and i search for it again it finds for me something similar so you can see here and char filter this is exactly what i want but because the fuzzy search is on it's not looking for an exact match so i have the, more of a flexibility more freedom to just search for something similar to what i want without having to know exactly the format of the space and then all, all of that for the for the node name so very helpful switch this on it's going to make it easier to find things. And another thing I want to show you is the workflow coach. 
The workflow coach, if you don't see this, then you might not have it enabled in your view. So click on the view and click on workflow coach to make sure it appears. And then if you have it appearing, but it doesn't show you any recommendations, then you probably need to go into your preferences and go into nine, go to workflow coach to enable it to send you and refresh that data. Just make sure this is checked and uh, let it know the updates frequency. So what this does is for any given node you have selected, it looks at the community behavior and looks at the nodes that they use most frequently after the whatever node you've selected. Yes, so here it says that after people read in an Excel file, 15% of them did the role to column held header. Okay, but let's say I just read in my file. I'm not sure what examples are available for me, but usually when you have data, you often want to, uh, you know, get it to be light and skinny, get rid of rows you don't need, get rid of columns you don't need. So you can see here that it's suggesting the column filter and right after that it's suggesting the row filter. Or perhaps you want to do some data blending you can use the join to attach, you know, other other data because maybe you had a whole different data source from an API, for instance, and you wanted to add those to your table. You can use this to join to join your data. And again, when you don't know what the nodes are called, this really helps you a lot. And for each node, you can click on it to see the description and evaluate if that's the appropriate node for you. If you don't see the showing, again, go to the view and click on the description, and it shows you. The the description. Okay, so those are a couple of tips I wanted to cover in the Nine platform itself. Now I'm going to quickly go over the different resources on the web you can find to help you. So the first one I'm going to show you, which I really like, is the Excel to Nine. The reason why I think this is super helpful is because most of us are very familiar with, with Excel. So this guide, uh, you can fill in your information and then you get to download the guide. This guide shows you how something is done in Excel. And then it shows you how the exact same thing is done in Nine, And this, I think, is powerful because having that connection right there makes the knowledge, you know, transfer over even better. So downloading this guide could be a good way to start. A lot of the notes you're going to use for data transformation, data cleaning, ETC, they are covered here. So definitely get this guide and, and look into it. Also on the Nine Learning, you have the Getting Started Guide. This helps you build your very first workflow, but it's also gives you an overview of, you know, how the platform is organized, the workbench. Another one is the software documentation. You have different documents. For instance, you can see, again, about the workbench. You can see about best practices, extensions. You can learn about components. These are more advanced topics, which I believe are covered in the L2 course. But if you like to read documentation, you can do this. I personally prefer videos. So for me, the courses are the most effective ones for me. So here you have the nine courses. You can explore courses. I like the self-paced courses. They have online courses and they have on-site courses. These are paid. Um, this is free and it's self-paced and I love it. And they also have certifications. I'm just going to show you really quickly. The L1 is now free. So that's really nice to show that you have, you know, at least a basic working knowledge of the Nine platform and it can help you with your career. So going back to the Nine courses, self-paced courses, you can see they have L1. They have two L1 courses, two L2 courses. Now the difference is the content are slightly curated based on your track. So if you want a more data science focused track, you will get more into algorithms and things like that. And machine learning, the data wrangling is more for data transformation. You can do both of them. Quite frankly, I did both of them and I found them both useful. Uh, I am like a data scientist engineer. So for me, I think it's, it's good to do both. So you can, you can, take them and they have different modules. I will take you into my platform just to show you quickly what they look like. Okay, so these are the ones I'm enrolled in. Um, I finished the server course. Let's just click on that. You have different modules here. So the modules, some of them have videos, which I love, I love videos. And there's quizzes, some of them have exercises. So see, there's some videos for you to learn about a concept. And the videos are pretty, they're, they're very fast, honestly. If you're a beginner, I think you might need to supplement with other things. 
But if you've used Lime for a while, they're very good to discover new things you didn't know about Lime or to just do some some uh, some recaps of what you already knew about Lime. If you're starting out, I do recommend you take one of the L1 courses and also the L2 because the L2 covers things like flow variables, workflow control, loops, which really helps you truly use Lime as a powerhouse. So definitely check those out. Next thing I want to show you is the community forum. The community the community forum is a nice place for you to, you know, you can grab some cheat sheets, which are basically these like A3, you know, documents, which have like a lot of nodes on one place. So it's a nice reference, a quick reference for you to, to find things. And they are topic oriented. So you have, you know, one for workflows, control and orchestration. So this will cover things, this one will cover things like loops and flow variables, things like that. Building components, data wrangling, machine learning. If you're a data scientist, definitely get this one. It's very nice. And just in a general forum, this is a place for you to ask questions, for you to research questions, because a lot of the questions you have have already been answered. So let's say I'm having an issue with my get request node. I can just search here, get request, request error. Search. I can see different topics. So maybe this one, get request illegal character and query is my issue. I can click on this right here and I can see that it has already been solved. So this could help me fix that issue right away. But if I search, let's just go back out one. So if what you need is not covered here, you can always click on more to see all the topics. See, there's 50 plus, there's 50 plus re, uh, results for this. So one of them probably would be helpful for you. But if none of them are, you can always click on a new post to make a new topic. Something I strongly recommend is if you want to get the best help from the community, do upload an example. I do understand lots of data is confidential. What I usually do for both here and Tableau is I just make some mock data, which models my data content and the structure. Okay, next thing I want to show you is the NIME hub. And this actually is the final thing I'm going to show you. So the NIME hub, what is it? It's a place to get examples of workflows, nodes, components, etc. Community members, including myself, often upload things we've worked on, you know, things we've built so that other people in the NIME community can benefit from that. So one way I used this, which I am so thrilled for, was at my last company, Fudak. I had to do a, pretty much a market basket analysis. I wanted to use the a priori algorithm to see which food, which food items were bought together so that we could create in our app food combos, which were primed to sell. So, so I came here and I searched for market basket and analysis. Analysis. If you click on something, it's going to take it directly to that workflow. If you want to see everything available, click on the first one with the search icon to see all the options. So this one is by Nime itself. So I'm going to click on this one. And I think this was actually the one I used. So I just click on this drag and drop and I bring it over to my Nime platform and I release it and it grabs that workflow. It opens it for me. Like how awesome is that? <laughs> So it, it's probably loading. It's just loading right now. Okay, so it's saying I'm missing. Oh, okay, so I have an older version. Just going to load anyways. And I'm missing the association rules learner node. So I'm just letting it download for me the appropriate algorithm because I didn't have it installed. This is a pretty new computer, so I'm missing a lot of things. So I'm going to restart my name and I'm probably going to have to re-download that file because I didn't save it. Um, but that's not a big deal. Okay. So I'm going to, okay. So you do have to have a workflow open for you to use that drag and drop functionality. So I have a scratch pad. I just call it that. And I put all my random ideas on there. So now it's downloading it and it should be fine with that note since it's gone and it's, it's uh, downloaded that note for me. So I'm just going to run this all the way here. Okay, so I can see that, you know, there's been some data brought in and I can see these are being run through the a priori algorithm. Basically, it looks at what items go together. I can see exactly how they have configured their workflow to get to the, to the desired output. So everything's laid out there and you can easily replicate this on your data to make your own uh, market basket analysis. 
So it's very powerful. You can just take a use case and go to see what's been done and use that workflow to learn an approach that you could use. A lot of cases you can pretty much edit that workflow with your data if it's a solid workflow. NIME is a trusted, of course, <laughs> NIME is a trusted source. So I try to, I prefer the workflows directly by NIME themselves. But let's say you wanted to learn how to work with APIs. So let's say just API, just search for that. And that's the final tip I want. I wanted to leave you with. So not only does NIME have the learning guides to get you started, all the courses, there's also all these resources between the community, the hub, that shows you examples or helps you troubleshoot your issues. So I really, really hope this video helps you realize what's available to you and helps you get a better uh, hold, a better understanding of the NIME Analytics platform. Thank you so much for watching. And just in general, if anybody has any specific requests on a NIME video they would like me to make, leave me a comment and I will try to get to that. Have a nice week. Goodbye.